A tuple is a built-in data type, meaning it's always available to you, the programmer. It's a kind of sequence data type, meaning it's a container, and it's marked by values enclosed in parentheses. In fact, as a container type, it's the default in Python, meaning any unenclosed comma-separated sequence, as long as the syntax is correct, will be handled as a tuple. But wait, there's more. Tuples have a number of other important characteristics that distinguish them from similar data containers in Python. Tuples are ordered. They contain elements arranged sequentially in a fixed order determined at the time of creation. Tuples are indexable, meaning they allow element access by zero-based integer indices. This means that the element at index zero will be the first element of the tuple. Tuples are sliceable. They support Python slice notation to retrieve a series of elements, which itself will be another tuple. Tuples are immutable, meaning they cannot grow or shrink and elements cannot be reassigned. But as you'll see in a future lesson, this doesn't mean that tuples will always hold the same data. Because they're unchanging, they're able to be optimized to use less memory. This makes tuples lightweight. They're heterogeneous, meaning they can hold elements of differing types, including other tuples. Tuples are iterable, meaning they conform to the standard Python interface for iterable objects and can be traversed using loops and comprehensions. Tuples are also combinable. They can be combined using concatenation, resulting in a new tuple. And finally, tuples are hashable. As long as the elements inside the tuple are themselves immutable, the tuple can be hashed, which is a requirement of keys in a Python dictionary. First things first, you'll need some tuples to work with. So your next stop, how to create a tuple. There's two main ways to create a tuple. The first would be to use a tuple literal. This is where you use the literal syntax of comma separated values wrapped in parentheses to define a tuple. For example, this line of code creates the variable my underscore tuple and within it stores a tuple with the integer values one, two. Alternatively, because tuple is the default sequence type, you can omit the parentheses and the results will be the same. The other way to produce a tuple would be to use the tuple constructor. To create a tuple using the tuple constructor, you must pass it an iterable. So in this example, we pass a list containing the integer values one, two, to the tuple constructor, which then creates a tuple with those values, ultimately storing it in the variable my underscore tuple. Now let's go to the REPL and see some more examples. First, open the Python REPL. You'll notice mine looks a little different. Like I mentioned, I'm using bPython, a Python REPL with a few more features than the built-in REPL. But this is purely for cosmetic reasons. So if you're using the built-in REPL yourself, it's not going to make a difference. It's time to create a tuple using the literal syntax. So in this example, you define a tuple literal by starting with an opening parenthesis and adding some values. First, the string, Jane Doe. Next, the int, 25. Next, the float, 1.75. And finally, the string, Canada. Then you finish off with a closing parenthesis. So you can imagine how this represents a row in a user's table in a database. Note how the values are of three different types, string, int, and float. This clearly shows the heterogeneous nature of the tuple. So how about another example? Here you define a variable point holding the integer values two and seven. And this is still a tuple. Remember, when using tuple literals, the parentheses are optional. So can you also create a single element tuple? Yes, but it's a little bit tricky. As you can see here, when you try to define this variable one word and you try to make a tuple out of the string hello and no other values, by simply adding parentheses, this is not a tuple and the parentheses are effectively ignored in this case. What you have to do is add a comma. By adding a comma after the value, you indicate that this is in fact meant to be a tuple. And it works the same without the parentheses as well. The variable one number now holds the tuple with a single value, the integer 42. 
Now you can try creating a tuple with a tuple constructor. Here, the same tuple point is being defined by using the tuple constructor. And to the tuple constructor, you pass a list containing the integer values 2 and 7. It's very important that you pass an iterable object to the tuple constructor. Otherwise, you will not be able to create a tuple. As you can see, if you try to pass a series of values instead of an iterable, you will get a type error because the tuple constructor requires that it receives only one argument and that argument should be an iterable. Let's see another interesting quirk of the tuple constructor. Because strings are iterable containers of characters, if you pass a string to the tuple constructor, the output will be a tuple where each element is a character of that string. So in this case, you created a tuple by passing the string Pythonista into the tuple constructor, and the output was a tuple of all of those characters. You may intend to do this, and you may not intend to do this. So this is something to watch out for when you're using the tuple constructor. You can also use the constructor with no arguments. The results are the same. But remember, tuples are immutable, meaning that once you've got your empty tuple, there's not a whole lot you can do with it. So there's really not many use cases for an empty tuple. So when should you use tuples? You already know when you definitely shouldn't use tuples. That's when you need a container that can be changed after creation. But that's pretty narrow. So here are some general use cases for when tuples should be your preferred data type. Ensuring data integrity. Tuples are immutable. They can't be modified after creation. Knowing this fact, you can use tuples to ensure an extra layer of data stability because the values in the tuple will not be changed. Reducing memory consumption. Because tuples are immutable, they have a reduced memory overhead when compared to other sequence data types. While it may not seem significant with small amounts of data, choosing tuples can be a significant benefit when working with large amounts of data or in situations where memory is limited, such as embedded systems. Improving performance. Another benefit of tuples is that they are generally more efficient than lists in terms of creation, iteration, and element access. Tuples can significantly improve the performance of your programs, especially when dealing with large-scale data. Let's look at some more concrete use cases for tuples. Associating two or more values, pairs, trios, etc. Tuples are the perfect choice for storing basic, unchanging sequences. For example, in this line of code, we use a tuple to store an RGB color sequence, 0, 2, and 255. If this were used as part of the configuration of a program, for instance, you wouldn't want the values to change while the program is running. So that's a great use of a tuple. Tuples are also great for representing database records. You can use a tuple to represent a record received from a database. In this line of code, we use a tuple to store four pieces of data about a car probably retrieved from a database table. The make, Toyota, the model, Camry, the year, 2020, and the color, blue. In our last example, a really cool use case is to implement a multi-value key in a dictionary. As you now know, tuples are hashable. You can use this fact to create multi-value keys as seen below. Capital Cities is a dictionary. The first key is a tuple, where the first element is the string Ottawa, and the second element is a tuple containing latitude and longitude coordinates of the city as floating point numbers. The corresponding value is Canada. The second key is likewise a tuple with the string Washington DC and its coordinates. The value is USA. This is a great way to distinguish between cities of the same name and you couldn't do it with a list. But remember, for this to work, each item in the tuple must be hashable.